Welcome back. So after you complete successfully installing SharePoint, it's a time to go and deploy your solution. It's a time and go and start using SharePoint and upload your documents and you know browse that sites. But to do that, you need first to create something called a web application. Web application is just like a logical, logical container for everything inside SharePoint. Let's have a look about that diagram that presented for us from Microsoft, from official mock. Here is it. You will find web application is just like a logical architecture. Inside that one, it will contain maybe one site collection or many. And inside site collection itself, you will find everything. You will find sites, list, library, documents, folders, everything inside that one. But to create site collection, you need first to have a web application. But Darwish, what's basically web application? Web application is just nothing. By end of day, it will give you two things, a place or a URL inside IIS, two axes that enter on it or internet or that zone. That's why he discussed here Microsoft about web application zone. So web application will provide for you the URL to access that sites and everything. And on the other hand, you will have a content database with the name that you're gonna specify inside the web application. That content database will contain all the documents, all the list, all the records of that web application. So by end of day, just like two things that we will see later on. Okay, so to understand that one very well, I think it's better to go and go to SharePoint itself, to central administration and start creating that one by ourselves. Here is it, central administration. And from here, I can click manage web application and I will have that window. From that window, by default, you will find that there are two web applications are creating for you by default. The first one, SharePoint Central Administration, that one is about SharePoint that is responsible for that UI, by the way. And to prove that, you will find here this URL, it will be exactly the URL here that I am opening from at the Central Administration. And that web application, it used that port 1000, which we specified while we are running the configuration wizard. So you will find here inside that URL, you will find that URL backslash 1000. And backslash definitely, you know, web application, whatever you're going to open. So if you open here system settings, so you'll find the web application URL backslash system setting dot ASPX. If I click monitoring, you will find the same the web application URL backslash monitoring.aspx. Oh my God. So all of that adjust web application? Yes. Okay. Here is that manage web application. So that one is coming to you by default. Okay. So let's move on and create our first web application. I will click here, new. And here is that you will find that window. First of all, it asks you, do you like to use an existing IIS website or creating a new IIS website? Definitely, it's mostly recommended. If you're going to create a fresh web application, you need to create a fresh new IIS. So here is it. Let's give it a name better than SharePoint. We can say training. And no need for that one. Just like that. Okay, training. You can name it anything. All right. And after that, you need to specify the port for this web application. Here is it. We can say, for example, 9000. You can choose the port. Let's move on to the host header. Host header is basically about a meaningful name for that web application. Maybe you call something like sharepoint.contosu.com. And that one definitely need to be configured through our DNS. We will discuss about that one later on but you need to understand right now, it will be configured from here. Let's move on. Here is it about the path. Keep that one up by default. It's basically inside um, uh, C drive, INET pop, triple W root, and virtual directly. And after that, the port number that we specified here, 9,000. Keep it as it is. No need to change anything here. Let's move on about, here is it about security configuration part. Security configuration part, it's very important about if you're gonna 
allow anonymous user to access that web application or not right now you know for training purpose we are keeping you know no and in meantime do you have any ssl certificate that it need to be used right now for that web application okay darwish for example right now i need to create certificate for that web application but it is not prepared yet so for the current time you can keep it no and later on i will show you how to change that one from not using ssl to start using a certificate over that from iis okay so no need to specify it right now we can keep it as it is right now let's move on about it. what about claim authentication type here is it inside you know sharepoint 2016 it's recommended to use ntlm and we will discuss about that one later on and what is the difference between ntlm and kerberos but it's recommended from sharepoint 2013 and you know beyond that to start using ntlm okay and let's move on in case in case you would like to start configuring form based authentication for your web application what mean about that right now you don't need to use that you know default login page from microsoft okay you need to have your own uh, asb.net membership and you need to configure that one to ask to ask about registration and username and password all you need to do is click about that checkbox and definitely you need to provide the membership provider name from here and you need as well to provide asb.net rule manager name from here in case you're gonna choose fba okay right now we are not using that one so i will keep it as it is by default i will scroll down here is it definitely if i'm gonna use the default sign in page no need to provide any url but in case you developed and design it that a custom sign in page you need to provide the path here or the page url okay i will keep it as it is you know as a default okay let's move in here is that it will be the public url it will be as we discussed before here is that the server name you know and the port that we specified it will be 9000 so that one it will be the first place inside your iis it will be that url you have to type that url inside your browser to start to access that web application okay let's move on about application pool application pool we will explain about it later on but right now it's recommended for each web application to start to have a fresh and new application pool okay so no need to start using existing application pool here's that you know as you can see uh, there are a lot of application pools but for me i will create a new application pool for that web application and i will specify the name of the application pool it will be with that name no it's better to be training the name of my new web application and here is that and for each application pool should have a dedicated account responsible for that so here is that i will use the sharepoint backslash administrator and really in a real production world i need to specify you know a new manage the account responsible for that web application let's have a look about the story behind application pool application pool it's about technology to allow many applications to be hosted in the same application pool so you can log in to all of those applications within the same username and password called it sso single sign on and basically it have one of these advantage it's like if that application pool is down all the applications or all the web applications hosted by that application pool all of them will be down so you need to trade off here between both of them and it's mostly recommended to have a separate application pool for each web application okay so let's move on here about the second place that is represented by new web application training here is that he about database database itself so we need here to specify the database server name okay and we need to specify the content database name that it will store all the content of that web application so in that case i will say you know you need to follow the naming convention here wss underscore content 
and you can re remove all of that numbers or go with id and keep you know like training underscore and the port 9000 but keep you know that non basically naming convention all right and definitely if we are talking about production environment so you need to provide the sql authentication the username and password right now for training purpose we are using windows authentication so i will keep it as it is that's about database so web application as we discussed it's about a place inside iis and second part is about database okay let's move on here is that in case you have a failover server you're gonna provide the information about it here in case you have you know that failover high availability and keep that creating all the service application by default as it is that's it yes that's it just click ok gonna take you know around five minutes according to your hardware resources to complete creating your first new web application over the sharepoint once it's completed we will continue and here is that the creation of your first web application has been completed successfully you have to check i will go to iis internet information service and from here let me expand that one like that and here is at the sites and here is that you can find the web application training it's created successfully here that's the first one and the second one you need to check from database here is that server name and windows authentication i will connect and i will expand databases and i will expand databases and if i scroll down i will find wss content underscore training 9000 that one it's responsible for keeping the content of that web application thank you for watching and see you in the next session